So we're going to talk about the trans-theoretical model. Sometimes it's also referred to as the stages of change model. That'll make more sense when we talk about the stages of change construct within the trans-theoretical model. But just so you know uh, that, that people are generally referring to the trans-theoretical model when they say stages of change. So first, we're going to talk about um, this idea or this concept that behavior changes in stages. And James Prochaska, who was the progenitor, or really the person that put forth the trans-theoretical model first, kind of revolutionized behavior change in the sense that he didn't talk about, and, and, and still doesn't, as he continues to be an active researcher and practitioner, um, in fact, he started uh, several for-profit companies um, aimed at uh, kind of this professionalizing behavior change. He doesn't talk about behavior change as a discrete event. Rather, he talks about it as a continuous event, something that happens over time. So, for example, you don't just change this instant, but your change was built up over time, and, and there were many things that contributed to it. And so... Um, <clears throat> by, by talking about it as a continuous event, he really kind of brings in a whole lot of aspects related to behavior change, things that get you thinking about changing behavior, for example, contribute to your change, things that precipitate your change, contribute to your change. Um, we're going to discuss the major constructs and how they work, we'll discuss some intervention applications and um, and, and then as we go, I'll be throwing in um, discussion about some of the major limitations of the trans theoretical model. So before we discuss the model, what I want you to think about and ask yourself this question. So it's a beautiful day outside, and you're going to the beach. The sun is out, so you just grabbed your sunglasses. How likely are you to take sunscreen with you? Are you very likely, likely, unlikely, or very unlikely? Now, if I were to ask the entire class together, um, my experience in having asked this question many times is that most of us would be unlikely. So, talk about behavior change and being a continuum. Let me follow up with this question. How often do you use sunscreen? Most of us would be sometime, would be between sometimes and rarely. Now, how likely do you think it is that you'll use sunscreen when you're older? And again, my experience is that most people are somewhere between likely and very likely. So we talk about behavior change on a continuum. What happens between now and sometime when you're older? Well, many of you will have children. Uh, many of you may be closer to an age at which um, skin cancer is, is more likely to be detected, and so you may be more concerned about or more aware of uh, the uh, skin cancer and the effects. You may um, encounter and meet more people who have suffered from skin cancer, and so it may be more relevant to you. Uh, all of those things, perhaps, and many more. And so, again, those events build up and uh, along this continuum of change to at some point later in your life when you are more likely to uh, engage in that behavior. <clears throat> okay, so um, Jim, uh, James Prochaska, who, uh, as I mentioned before, was the person who put forth the trans theoretical model. Now, um, just a little bit of background about him. Um, so, uh, the rumor has it, or uh, as the stories go, um, James Prochaska grew up in a home uh, with a, uh, a father that um, suffered from substance abuse. And so, from a young age, he um, asked himself frequently this question of why are people addicted? And more important, how do we change addiction related behaviors? Um, as a result, the trans theoretical model is most widely applied and used in settings of um, uh, addiction and, and so addiction related behaviors. It is probably the premier model or theory for uh, tobacco control, um, tobacco cessation, and so on and so forth. So, um, 
perhaps his own experience has motivated his um, research and practice in the area of uh, substance abuse. So really, um, this, this kind of took off in the 1970s through the 1980s, and then in the 1990s, um, where we started to see a lot of scales emerge that were specific to the trans-theoretical model. So um, one of them that is widely used is this ready, readiness to change questionnaire, and this is something that I've used um, on occasion to demonstrate how the stages of change or how these constructs really come into play with respect to substance abuse. So the first construct in the trans-theoretical model is the stages of change. Now, um, the stages of change, as the first construct, has uh, um, several different dimensions or aspects. And you can think about it along a continuum. So perhaps if this weren't depicted as um, you know, bullet points, but rather you could think about it as uh, along a... Uh, um, a, a long road, um, kind of like this picture right here, or as a, uh, a, a measuring stick. Um, this very first stage that people are categorized into is pre-contemplation. Now, Prochaska says these are people who aren't thinking about changing. So, for example, if we were to use tobacco, uh, tobacco, uh, these are people who are not thinking about quitting tobacco. It's not on their minds. Uh, they are not... Um, uh, they, 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 there's no uh, kind of goal to, to quit smoking. Um, and, and he has actually assigned um, time periods to it. And so he says these are people who are, who are not thinking about quitting in the next six months. Now, the next group of, uh, of people would be categorized or fall into what he calls a contemplation stage. Now, these are people who are considering change. They're thinking about it. They probably know it's important, but they aren't going to do it immediately. And again, he's assigned a time frame to these people, one to six months. The next group are people who find themselves in the preparation stage. These are people who are planning on change, uh, even in the immediate future. Um, and, and again, Prochaska says within one month. So these are people who, within the month, are planning on quitting smoking. Um, let me share real briefly an experience um, that, uh, that I've had. Uh, well, I've known um, many people who have tried to quit smoking. Um, two, uh, I, I've had neighbors over the years, um, two of them that I would like to... Uh, to, to give you examples of. Um, one of them um, was, w well, actually, it was a couple, George and Tracy. Um, these were smokers, uh, long-term smokers, um, both well into uh, their adult lives and had been smoking probably since adolescence. And um, I saw them on a number of occasions try to quit smoking, and they moved through this pre-contemplation stage where um, they had freely admitted, "We are smokers. We, you know, we don't we don't care. This is what we do, and uh, we 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 don't want to quit." Um, I lived I lived next door to George and Tracy for a number of years, and I saw them move through these stages. Um, where they moved into contemplation. In fact, at one point they discussed with my wife and they said, hey, uh, I, we, we would really like to quit smoking. In fact, we're going to quit smoking. Um, right now, we have a lot going on in our lives. Um, we're, we, we just transitioned um, in, in work. So I don't think you know, we're able to deal with the stress right now, but at some time in the near future, we are going to quit smoking. Then they moved into this preparation stage where they actually started doing things, um, preparing to quit smoking. So they started telling all of the neighbors, hey, we're going to quit smoking. If you see us um, smoking, you know, really uh, get on our case. Um, okay, so that's George and Tracy. Uh, I also had a, a neighbor named Don. Don was um, uh, quite a bit considerably older than George and Tracy. Um, and had been smoking his entire life, at least since um, early adolescence. And uh, Don 
used to uh, he used to go out early in the mornings and and, and smoke um, on his porch and uh, I know that uh, uh, he always considered himself I think to be in this kind of perpetual state of contemplation thinking that yeah someday I'd like to quit um, but but I can't do it now um, well Don moved into the preparation stage and he approached my wife who was in charge of um, the outreach tobacco cessation programs for the county health department and so Don approached my wife and said hey Lane my wife's name is Lane Lane what can I do to quit smoking so he was in the preparation stage he started making some preparations uh, to to prepare to quit smoking and so she brought home um, this tobacco cessation packet that had all sorts of things in it from Nicorette gum to stress reliever tips and things like that so Don had moved into the preparation stage next is this action stage now um, action is kind of characterized by people who are actually doing something they have quit the behavior so they have stopped smoking they have discontinued alcohol abuse they have they have made a change they have started exercising and uh, people can be in in this um, action stage uh, for uh, for for a number of uh, months in fact they could be in the action stage for um, up to uh, up to six months and in in the case of tobacco cessation uh, it could take uh, that long to really feel like you've gotten over the environmental stimuli that could target or trigger um, tobacco use and so people can stay in this action stage again for for a number of months um, maintenance stage and termination um, the book and many people refer to these as, as just one stage um, I've listed them here as, as different stages, but 